Guys, subscribe and turn notifications on, leave a like and drop a comment down below. Get here first and win giveaway codes I will pin as first comment on some of my videos. Be fast and good luck. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I bring you another Destiny 2 video and today I want to talk about the Lunar's Howl. A weapon it seems many, many people are chasing. A weapon which for the casual player or the solo player... Uh, many think it isn't within reaching distance. Today I bring you a few tips on getting this weapon for the casual on solo player, much like myself. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support, you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so the difference between my tips and probably the tips you've seen via other videos is I am a scrub PvP player. I class myself as average at best. I mean, you know these two people, you've seen me play often enough. But I have the Lunar's House, so if I can get it, I'm certain you can get it too, and I wasn't carried either. My pal, who's a worse player than me, who also played it with me, has also got it, so yes people, so yes, you can get it. Now, I know it does take a little bit of a grind. A grind, to be honest though, actually isn't as bad as you may think if you ask me. So what's actually special about this Lunar Cell? Well, it's basically the fastest archetype of uh, hand cannon in the game, meaning it shoots 180 rounds per minute. If you ain't sure what that means, I mean if you have a trust, it's got the same firing speed. Yet the Lunar's Howl is capable of free tapping, thanks to a perk exclusive to this weapon and a not forgotten which we won't get into in this video. Magnificent Howl is the perk's name. Landing two headshots gives the third extra damage. This basically allows you to free tap with this weapon. This paired with the fact it has no recoil, amazing range, insane aim assist and an amazing reload speed it makes the weapon absolutely unmatched in PvP for sure. The weapon is just a beast and it's definitely worth the grind in my opinion, even though it can be a painful one. Okay, so the quest starts via Shax. He should hand you a red ticket if you don't remember picking it up. It should be in your Pursuits tab. I believe it's called Shock and Denial. Well, that's where it starts anyway. Now, I will say, if you didn't know, it's 99% competitive, which you have to play to get this weapon. Meaning, if you can get a four-man team of decent players, that is absolutely great. But you can enter comp solo too. I mean, solo comp isn't wise, but it's possible. I mean, the first player to ever get this weapon did all of it solo and also got a not forgotten and two solo so yeah it's definitely possible now competitive has changed a little since season three radar is back clash and control have been added also and it does feel a little more casual that's for sure but don't be mistaken you will still come up against stacked teams of sweats it's just one of those things now the end part of the lunas house quest is to get that fabled rank the scoring system is as follows you earn points for winning and lose them for losing if you go on win streaks you gain a heck of a lot the first win you get 34 points the second win if you are on a streak you get 44 points, third win you get 54, fourth win you get 64 and fifth win you get 74. Now those numbers are rough accurate but it is thereabouts. What's changed again for season 4 is though you keep that 5 win streak and it doesn't reset if you keep on winning like it did in season 3. So potentially you can earn 74 points every win after that fifth win streak has come into play. Fable requires 2100 points, so roughly around 31 games, if you can go on a 31 win streak, you would reach Fable straight away. But yeah people, that isn't likely for us noobs. I'm just throwing those numbers out there. You also lose around 30 points every loss, but there are no loss streaks anymore, so you don't lose more than 30 per given loss. So yeah, Fabled and 2100 points is your end goal, but in all honesty people, I wouldn't even worry about that until you get to that stage of the quest, as there are other things you have to do in the meantime. And firstly guys, you have to complete 10 competitive matches. So completing these 10 competitive matches, you can win or lose, it still counts. Winning is obviously your target as every point you get helps. But again guys, if comp is new to you, use these 10 comp matches to learn the feel of competitive because it's way different to quick play, that's for sure. Once you have them 10 games out of the way, you now have to get 150 hand cannon kills in competitive. Now, recommendations for hand cannons, I mean, there are a few out there, and if you are like me and don't really like hand cannons, well, you will have to get used to them just for this quest. So I went through my whole vault of hand cannons to see what worked best for me. 
I was literally using a different hand cannon every single game. But my top picks and recommendations for you guys are the Better Devils. This is an all round hand cannon in my opinion. The Old Fashioned, if you have this in your vault or collections, it feels crisp and with that kill clip, the weapon feels great. High emesis too. The Crimson, this exotic close to mid range, is absolutely amazing just for those exotic perks. The Ace of Spades, this is a fan favourite, you will see many many people using this in competitive, but for me, the Trust worked best. The Gambit Hand Cannon is just a monster. Now what I suggest you guys do is, as it will be different for everyone, try out different hand cannons, see what works best for you because what works best for me may not work best for you. Don't just follow the pack as that isn't how it works, find a hand cannon which works. A hand cannon which surprised me was the 10 paces, this weapon just felt great for sure. So try out new different selections, you just never know what works best for you. And 150 hand cannon kills, by the way, it is quite a lot for competitive even if control and clash have been added to it. So once you have the hand cannon kills out of the way, you now have to get 200 solo kills. These can be weapons or abilities. I personally had my favourite year one pulse rifle the last edition stored in my vault which was solar. I mean if you get this out of your collections though it will be void, but I had a solar one saved. But there are numerous weapons you can use here, again just see what you have lying around. The Icarus shotgun seems to be a pretty popular one, but there are many many different weapons you can use here for this part. Remember with control and clash added into comp, there will be games where we get 20 plus solo kills per game. So although 200 seems like a lot, it truly ain't that bad. So after you have your solo kills, you now have to play 3 games of rumble, you don't have to win, just complete them. Really easy to be honest. So once you get your rumble games out of the way, the next step is to get 100 headshots with hand cannons in competitive. Again guys, by now after getting 150 hand cannon kills, I'm hoping you found a hand cannon which works best for you. Again for me it was the trust which worked best, it's just snappy and accurate. Now with the trust I wouldn't really worry about its role, I mean a base weapon is great for sure. The perks are just additional benefits, so if you have a trust try that out. The Ace of Spades again is a great great weapon, the Crimson works great too, I mean it's snappy, every headshot kill you get gives you health back and reloads the weapon. So yeah, the Crimson seems like a pretty popular one, the Ace of Spades again, but for me the Trust worked best. What I did here was, and I ain't ashamed to say, is I just followed my teammates around and stealed their kills. That's where I got most of my headshots from, I won't lie to you, because I suck with hand cannons, I really do. And this step in itself took me the longest for sure. I mean a lot of you guys out there who are watching this video probably love hand cannons. You've probably got a hand cannon ready for this, which is perfect. But for me, that was not the case. I absolutely suck with hand cannons, I really do. So stealing kills here worked best for me. I mean, I was ending games with like 10 plus hand cannon kills, but only one of them was a headshot. But hey, progression is progression, people. So once you have your 100 headshots, and that has been achieved, now you concentrate on hitting Fabled. For some this point may have already been reached, that is absolutely great, the quest will be all for you guys, but for others like myself, I mean I got close when doing other parts of the quest and then lost a lot of points. It was due to me using weapons out of my comfort zone and not contributing the best I could. But once those headshots were done with the hand cannon, I could use what I most liked and what worked best for me. This is why I say don't worry about levels points until you actually get to this stage. I will add, this isn't retroactive, so if you reach Fable then lose those points before finishing the 150 headshots, it doesn't count and you have to reach Fable again. Now reaching Fable for many as you will see in the comments is an easy thing, but it isn't for the everyday scrub like me. I mean, if you can get a team of 4 here, get one, doing this solo really hurts. It really does. Even if you come across teams of 2 and 3 while playing, sending messages asking to join them won't hurt. I mean what's the worst that can happen? They'll say no and you'll be left solo which you're already at anyway. At the end of the day playing in a team of 3 even with people you don't really know is better than playing solo. I teamed up with a couple of people via sending messages etc etc and it worked people. Having that communication while playing game types like survival and countdown seriously helps so do what you can i mean if i can help i will try leave a comment on this video with what platform you play on your current points your subclass and what you need or how you can help if this video can be our very personal own lfg that's absolutely great help one another out people why not but yeah people once fabled has been reached you should get a notification to go and see shacks if that doesn't pop up you need to fly to the tower and then head back to orbit it then will pop up as it did for me you then have to travel back to Shaxx and BAM the Lunis Howl is yours people. A long quest but seriously worth the grind. The Lunis Howl is an absolute 
animal and when you try it out in PvP I'm pretty sure you will agree. You also get a new quest with the Lunar's Hell called Hope. This is a golden ticket once completed rewards you the not forgotten. The bigger brother to the Lunar's Hell, a weapon I've already made a video on which you'll find linked within the video description. But yeah guys these are my tips for the average noob like me and how you can get the Lunar's Hell. A weapon which seems to be locked behind a massive grind but actually really isn't. I mean I got mine in 2 or 3 days so it isn't that bad. And on that note guys we have come to the end of the video, if you enjoyed it leaving a like it really helps out and if you are new around here and enjoy daily destiny videos like guides, top 5s, gameplays, reviews, just about everything be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video I upload turn notifications on by hitting that bell button but again thanks for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand